In 2013, China became the first country to carry out a robotic lunar landing in nearly four decades. Then in 2019, it became the first and only country to land on the mysterious side of the moon. Three years later, China completes construction of its newest orbital space station, Tiangong. After the return of the Chang'e 5 and Chang'e 6 research vehicles, the discoveries made are so phenomenal that China is developing a program that plans to land astronauts on the moon by 2030 and build a research base at its South Pole. Will the moon become Chinese? What have their missions discovered that gives them such courage? What, how, and where will they build on the moon? We will learn the answers to these and other questions in the next few minutes. We touched on China's drive for space dominance in our last video, but in this one we'll expand on the topic by focusing specifically on the moon. That seems to be where the entire Chinese government has its sights set right now. China's rapid development in the space sphere has both a reason and a name. It is the USA. In 2011, the Wolf Amendment was passed, limiting the US space agency's cooperation with its Chinese counterparts due to espionage concerns. These legal restrictions leave China without access to the International Space Station, which in turn has spurred the country's ambitions to create its own called Tiangong. Today, however, this move backfires on the US because China now has a brand new space station and is planning its future activities on the moon with full force, while the US faces a serious challenge as the end of the International Space Station's operational life will come in 2031. Tiangong is also included in China's plans to send a crew to Mars in the coming decades. It seems that the Chinese have not slept through the last 15 years since the ban, and now we will just suddenly see the fruit of their labor in the coming years. But what have they found so stimulating on our moon? When Chinese scientists analyzed the soil samples that their lunar probe brought back from the moon, they discovered something revolutionary. Water was found in the soil along with minerals. The discovery of water on the moon is nothing new. Spacecraft from NASA and India have already detected signs of water on the lunar surface and Chinese scientists recently identified water sealed in beads scattered across the lunar terrain. This latest discovery is particularly significant, however, as it is the first time scientists have found water in a molecular form, H2OO, in physical samples taken from the moon. Even more remarkable is that this water was extracted from an area of the moon where it was previously thought that water in this form could not exist. It is this discovery that changes everything because this type of water could be the resource needed for lunar habitation, the scientists write in their study. The research suggests that water has existed on the moon since the time of ancient volcanic eruptions, and it was likely ejected from the moon's interior. This discovery supports the theory that water has been present on the moon since its formation, but mankind was not always aware of the presence of the precious resource on the moon. Although scientists have debated this possibility for centuries, researchers have often thought that the moon was completely dry. This belief was reinforced after no traces of water were found in samples collected by NASA's Apollo and the Soviet Union's lunar missions. Today, however, the latest discovery firmly confirms the presence of water and gives China even more incentive in its quest to become a dominant cosmic power. But that is far from all. It turns out there's more. Scientists confirm the existence of a cave on the moon that could be used to shelter future explorers. It's located not far from where Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed in 1969. Theories about the existence of this cave have been a subject of interest for years, but now an Italian research team has provided convincing evidence of its existence. The cave is accessible through the deepest known pit on the moon, located in the Sea of Tranquility just 248 miles from the site of the historic Apollo 11 landing. The pit, and more than 200 others found in this region, were formed by the collapse of lava tubes, structures created by lava flows that solidified and subsequently left cavities beneath the surface. The researchers analyzed radar data collected by a NASA orbiter and compared the results with similar lava tubes on Earth. According to their calculations, the radar data showed only the entrance to the underground cavity, which was probably at least 131 feet wide and reached depths of hundreds of feet, and possibly more. In fact, 
This discovery leads scientists to speculate that there could be hundreds of pits and thousands of lava tubes on the moon that could offer natural refuges for future astronauts. Such caves would provide protection from cosmic rays, solar radiation and micrometeorites, which are a serious risk to humans on the lunar surface. Here, of course, China is once again ahead, and they are not at all counting on this discovery because they have already drawn up a plan for exactly how they will build their lunar base in the next few years. Chinese scientists are currently developing innovative technologies for alien construction that will be applied to building a lunar base using the local soil. The program is led by Professor Ding Leun of the Wajang University of Science and Technology. Experts are combining 3D printing methods with traditional Chinese construction techniques. These technologies will allow the lunar soil to be turned into bricks with assemblies that robots will join together into structures similar to building with Lego bricks. This technology promises to provide a reliable way to build large lunar structures. Building on the moon naturally faces many challenges. The environment there is characterized by an extremely high vacuum and temperature fluctuations in the range of 570 to 750 degrees Fahrenheit, making traditional construction methods ineffective and unable to guarantee structural stability and protection for space explorers. In addition, the task is further complicated by frequent lunar tremors, cosmic radiation, solar winds, micrometeor impacts, and the complex topography of the lunar surface. When you take all these factors into account, you can see for yourself how complex and interdisciplinary this project is. Yui Dengyun, chief designer of the fourth phase of China's lunar exploration program, points out that at this stage, one of the main objectives of this phase is to build a research station at the south pole of the moon. It will focus on in-depth research in lunar science and conducting technical experiments to exploit lunar resources in situ. But how will the first step in China's takeover of the moon proceed? That became known recently thanks to a presentation by a Chinese space agency engineer at a conference in Wuhan. The plan includes two separate missile launches. The first launch will send a lunar module to the lunar surface, while the second will transport Taikonauts to lunar orbit. In lunar orbit, the crewed module will be met by the lunar lander. The Taikonauts will be transferred to the lander, which will take them to the lunar surface. There, they will carry out scientific research and collect lunar samples. After completing the surface mission, the lander will return the Taikonauts to orbit, where they will board their original spacecraft to return to Earth. This dual launch plan is the solution to China's long-standing challenge of developing a heavy rocket capable of transporting both Taikonauts and a lunar module in a single mission. The lunar mission will not be a one-off. The country's long-term goal is to build a permanent research station there by 2030, where scientific experiments will be carried out and further possibilities related to lunar territory will be explored. This, in turn, seems to be pressing the US for urgent retaliatory action and add the expiring time of their International Space Station and the situation becomes critical. This is what they are responding to with the Artemis program as a counterpoint to China's plans. NASA also has ambitious plans to establish a lunar base, which is one of the main objectives of the program. It is designed to return humans to the moon and establish a long-term human presence there. The program's first mission, Artemis 1, has already been conducted and sent the unmanned Orion capsule to lunar orbit and back. This was an important test of the technologies and systems needed for future manned missions. The next mission, Artemis 2, is planned for late 2025 and will put four astronauts around the moon. It will be the first manned flight to the moon in more than 50 years and will demonstrate NASA's ability to send humans on deep space missions. The most important part of the program will be the Artemis 3 mission, which will be tasked with landing astronauts near the moon's south pole. For this purpose, NASA has selected SpaceX's Starship spacecraft as the program's first lunar module. This mission is planned for late 2026 and will mark the first human landing on the moon since the Apollo 17 mission in 1972 if China doesn't beat them to it, of course. Just like the Chinese mission, NASA plans for Artemis 3 to lay the groundwork for future missions that will lead to a sustainable lunar base. It will serve as a platform for scientific research and help future missions to Mars by providing important experience in long-term residence and operation in an extraterrestrial environment.
The race to acquire extraterrestrial territories seems to be going on unnoticed by our eyes. The running out of time of the US space station is forcing them to be more innovative and flexible. And China, for its part, is investing increasing resources in becoming the first country to send permanent inhabitants to the moon. This race, invisible to us, is clearly being fought with the latest and most cutting-edge techniques. But why there? Why exactly is the dark side of the moon now so interesting to these countries? Do they not know something more? Is there something else there besides water? Ancient ruins left by a previous civilization, perhaps? But that's another story in which a former NASA employee tells us about how he was driven to destroy evidence related to ancient lunar cities. Continue with this story by clicking on the video on the left of your screen.